Welcome to another Books and Things with Tom. And of course, I'm Tom. Today, we have Debbie Kilday with us. Debbie is an author, a poet, a nature photographer, and an artist. Uh, she designs book covers for authors, plus custom note cards and posters. And she's an author of two books. And one of them is the uh, No Limits and How I Beat the Slots. And that should be very interesting for anybody who likes to go to the casino. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the ones we're going to talk to today. Welcome, Debbie. Hi, Tom. And thank you for coming. Would you, would you like to talk about your No Limits book? Um, it's the story, my story, of how I spent five years uh, playing dollar slot machines, mostly at Mohegan Sun Casino. And how I won $3.4 million during that time. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody wants to know how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have any of that money today. <laughs> and it's not because I spent it, it's because I gave it away uh, to other people that were sick uh, with different kinds of illnesses. Wow. You gave it all away. I did. And. Uh, how did you go about winning out? Tell us a story about how you get started going to the casino. Well, I'm 58 years old now, and I was 50 at the time. My best friend was dying of cancer, and she wanted me to go to the casino with her. And I had never been to a casino in my whole life. And um, the night we were supposed to go, uh, my husband and I, and she and her husband, she had her first brain seizure. She had brain cancer, and mm. um, she was unable to go. So she said to me, though, I want you to go and make new friends before I die. Um, you know, go to the casino anyway. Yeah. Which she was going to ask for a report the next morning, so I knew I had to go. Yeah. So anyway, I went. Um, we went to a comedy show of all things, which was very depressing because I was thinking about her the whole Plus. time. Yeah. Um, but after that, my husband went one way. He had been to casinos before. He had, he had gone to play some of his favorite machines. Uh -huh. And I went wandering across the floor and I came across this bank of machines where everybody was talking to each other. Um, I didn't know anything about the machines at that time, and they were dollar machines. So I thought, well, this is this looks like a good place, you know, to sit. And uh, so I sat down and I started uh, playing this machine. But as soon as I did, all the people there started talking to me, huh? asking me, "What's your name? Where are you from?" All yeah. this. So they were very friendly. Wow. And um, then all of a sudden, there was a shout out that the woman at the other end of the row had just won $10,000 playing a, you know, uh. this machine. And um, I, was think, I was sitting there, gee, I wonder what $10,000 even looks like. <laughs> and just as I thought that, my machine went off and I had just hit 10000 myself. Wow. Uh. Now you got a picture of that in your book, I that do. first 10000 I do. Let's see, where is it? Right here. There you go. That's unbelievable. So, uh, <laughs> the, the most unbelievable thing was after that, uh, we did go home, but um, the next night we had been invited to come back. And um, of course I went back and we saw Paul Anka, uh, who was very nice to me, you know. Yeah. And he's a great entertainer. But now, who invited you back? The Mohegan Sun did? Yeah, Mohegan Sun did. Is that right? And gave you free tickets? To they actually gave us dinner, a hotel room, and free tickets to see See that? Paul money comes to money. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so after the show, I, I went up back to see if I could play the same machine. And it wasn't even available, so I had to sit at another machine. But. I was with the same people that had been there the night before. Uh -huh. They were back. Uh -huh. And um, so anyway, I started talking to them, playing, and I just, I won another jackpot. I won $2,500. 20 minutes later, I won 5000 um, It was like 40 minutes later, 1000 
500. I mean, I just kept winning. Wow. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why at all. Huh. So did you figure out why you were winning? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure out why I was winning until after my friend died. Uh, she, in that first five months before she passed away, I had won four hundred thousand dollars. Really? Uh, playing the dollar slots at Mohegan Sun, and um, I gave that money toward her medical. She had, you know, outrageous medical bills from the cancer. Yeah. Uh, the medications were outrageous. So I helped her um, those first five months, and then she passed away, and I was I went into a, quite a depression after that. I can imagine. Um, you know, I couldn't save her, but I made her comfortable. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I wondered, I started wondering, why am I winning so much? Uh, can I do this anywhere? You know? Yeah. So I decided to go to Las Vegas, and um, they were, all the casinos across the country were offering me free stays, um, you know. So we went to Las Vegas, and four days and three nights there, I made three hundred and sixty thousand dollars playing dollar slot machines oh, all right. in yeah. all the different casinos, but mostly at the time it was called the Las Vegas Hilton. Uh, now it's the Las Vegas Hotel, but yeah, mostly there. <laughs> wow! How how did your husband Mike uh, react to you giving all this money away? Well, it wasn't one lump sum. Oh, sorry. So um, it was like you know. You win a few thousand, you give some money to somebody, um, you keep winning, you keep giving money away, um, or paying for things, dinners, yeah. or whatever you were doing with the money. And that's what happened. I mean, people don't realize, uh, someone took me out to dinner a couple of months ago. Well, we went to dinner, and they insisted upon paying and I said to them, uh, <coughs> well, they said that they insisted upon paying. And I said, you don't realize what you're doing here because if you keep paying for everybody's dinner each time you go out, that's exactly what happened to me. Every time I won, I gave money away. Yeah, it's so easy to do. That's how it, yeah, it yeah. amounts to. Well, I think that's, that much. you know, pretty much true with people who don't have anything, suddenly have everything, they're more than happy to share. Yeah, I mm. mean, well, but it wasn't until I was in Las Vegas that I realized why I was winning so much. And once I found that out, um, which I'll tell you about in a minute, but, you know, once I found that out, it, there was no stopping me. I knew I could go anywhere and win like I had been winning. Wow. Um, I was playing an old ancient machine. It was like eight feet tall. And... Um, it had this window, you know, and you could see inside the machine and all the wheels were turning and it had little slots where the numbers came down and I was seeing like a seven, a two, a five, an eight. I didn't even know what it meant, you know. Yeah. Then the next spin I was seeing different numbers and then I, I won 10,000 on that machine and that's when I realized I was seeing the program running the machine in the background by looking at what you see on the face of the machines. Oh. At first it was subconscious, those first five months, yeah. but now I was conscious of why I was, I was only sitting at machines that were gonna win subconsciously. Hmm. But then now I was sitting at all the machines, you know, that I knew were gonna win after that. Well, that's amazing, and, and you explain in detail how you can get away with this, or how you won, <laughs> and the casinos don't care. No, because I'm very generous. Um, you know, I. But they would actually probably like you to sell a lot of these books so everybody can go up there and try, <laughs> and knowing they're not going to make as much money as you did. <laughs> well, there are a lot of variables. Uh, even though I tell people in the book, you know, what to look for, yeah. and how to play the different machines and what machines you shouldn't play, like you shouldn't, if you can help it, not play penny machines, which. They would probably wouldn't like me saying that. Probably. <laughs> but, well, no, um, because they, if they play more expensive machines, they get more money. Yeah, but uh, I tell people if they can't afford a, a dollar machine, uh, play a quarter machine. Yeah. Because, you know, the higher the denomination machine you play, 
the easier it is to win more money, of course. And actually, the penny machine isn't that cheap because in order to win anything, you got to put what twenty cents in the thing. Well, the, the the first rule I have to tell you is to play the max into any machine that you're playing. Yeah. So, if you don't, um, what happens internally in the machines is they either come to a stop and sit idle waiting for that next coin, uh, the maximum amount of coin, or they, in the older machines, they go back one step so you're that much further away from the jackpot. Huh. Plus when, when it hits for the jackpot, you didn't put the max in so you don't get anything. <laughs> yeah, in some cases you don't get anything. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, so I figured out um, how to do this and the reason why you know, I I spent a lot of money. I mean, making a lot of money, I still spent a lot of money uh, at the different casinos. Oh, sure. uh, my favorite casino is Mohican Sun, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like to that, say. too. Yeah. <laughs> but you can, uh, you can spend a lot of money there. I mean, those shops and everything, and buying gifts. And I did. And, yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah, you know, I never got a gift, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fantastic. And I've read the book, and you've got some stories in here about people that you met. And uh, why don't you tell us some about some of the people? Well, I met a lot of celebrities uh, during my time that I was going. Uh, the only reason why I stopped going was the tax uh, implications, because when you make that kind of money, and you know. I'm a cancer survivor and I have chronic Lyme disease for over 20 years. So when you go from like $11,000 a year to like $600,000 a year, yeah. um, it affects you greatly, you know. And then if you give the money away, I, I never thought about all these tax things that would yeah. happen. But um, anyway. I was spending money, I was making money, I was giving money away, and um, one night, you know, I had a, a following of about 80 people that would follow me around in the casino that I really got to know well. Uh, some of them were, had their own businesses, some of them were very high rollers, some were in government uh, positions, which I'm not going to talk about, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, they would. Um, be playing and um, and following me and, and asking me. I, I got to be like uh, f hounded by some people. You know, like they wanted. Uh, can can you sit next to me? Can you tell me what machines to play? And they probably um, wanted to touch you for luck. And <laughs> oh God! In uh, <laughs> Las Vegas, they would pet my hair for luck, and you know. So, I think you're a, bu a Buddha <laughs> from the belly. <laughs> so it seems to work, though, I have to tell you. So um, anyway, so, you know, I tried to, like, hide out one night. Um, I went on a section of the casino that I never hardly went to, and I was sitting there in a corner where no one really would ever have found me. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> And um, someone sat down like two machines away from me, and I was thinking to myself, who would be here, you know? Why don't they go play someplace else? Yeah. And then I could tell they were like looking at me, so I, I turned, and it was Kathy Griffin, the comedian. No kidding. And wow. she has her makeup um, airbrushed on, she she's loaded with freckles when she doesn't airbrush her makeup on. So she was loaded with freckles. She didn't have any makeup on. Yeah. She had her hair uh, up on top of her head and clipped. You know, <laughs> she was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. And um, so I said to her, if you don't tell anybody, I'm sitting here. Uh, I won't tell anybody I saw you either. <laughs> and she started laughing and she said, Who are you? <laughs> And I said, I'm a celebrity of sorts in a different way. Yeah. And um, so we got to talking, and she invited me to see her. She was playing, uh, she was doing a couple of shows that week, and she invited me to her show. We went, my husband and I went to her show, and um, she had asked me, where do you usually hang out? And I had told her, 
And she said, you know, I don't believe that you could win that kind of money, she said to me. So after the show, I went back to where I normally play, and I was with all my friends. Uh, and it was very late, or early in the morning, I should say. And all of a sudden, she came out uh, from around the corner, and she was like, Debbie, you know, <laughs> I came to see you. And then she sat next to me, and just as she did, I was playing this uh, 10 times machine, uh, dollar machine, and I had just won $10,000, uh -huh. just as she sat down, and she said, Deb, you weren't kidding when you said you win a lot. What did you win? And I said, $10,000. She said, Oh my God, she said, yes. <laughs> now I believe you. you know? and, but there was like a crowd of people came running over uh, to get her autograph. Yeah. And um, they didn't much pay attention to me, which was good. You know? Yeah, get the attention off yeah. of you. And you met Barry Manilow, was it? Barry Manilow, I met the first time, uh, my first visit to Las Vegas. And um, he became a good friend. He was the most kind, generous man. Uh, I can't say enough good things about him. Yeah. Um, people realize that he has all these different organizations where he collects instruments for kids in uh. high school. Um, he gives to all kinds of charities. But they just don't realize just how much he does give that he doesn't yeah. want people to really, he doesn't brag about it. Yeah. I told him I'm going to brag about you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's too bad because we, all, we always see the big celebrities and they're making all kinds of money, but we don't hear a lot about what they do with it. Yeah. And you know that a lot of them do mm -hmm. donate. Well, people said the same thing about me. Now that this book has come out, uh, they'll say, I thought you were just a photographer or, <laughs> um, you know. Now, you mentioned in your book that a lot of your f friends and relatives were upset with you because you were gambling. You like know, I said, I had never that. been to a casino until yeah. I was 50. There was a reason for that. I was taught never to go to a casino, don't bother with people that are gamblers. Uh, they're degenerates, they're bad people, but uh, all the people I've met at the casino uh, were nothing but good. I yeah. mean, good, very good people. Yeah. And, you know, it goes without saying that you know there's good people, there's bad people, no matter what yeah. line it is. And uh, but I know that you had, you had said a lot of your relatives wouldn't even talk to you because you were gambling. Yeah, I've, I've been disowned uh, by some of them, cut out of uh, will of my uncle, uh -huh. or just the fact that they won't talk to me anymore. Yeah. I mean, that hurts. You know, yeah, hurts. people get get blind design and they don't see the good that people do. Oh, I, <clears throat> who else did you meet down there? Uh, I met um, different people that live in the community um, all over Connecticut. Uh -huh. I became, like I said, I became friends with some people that were big in businesses uh, throughout Connecticut. And um, they were very interesting. Some were, like I said, uh, Doctors, lawyers. Now, you mentioned in the book, because I read this whole book, because I thought it was a fantastic book. It's not just about playing the slots. There's a lot of human interest stories in here. And, and it, it's been a couple of months since I read it, and i got to try and remember. There was a woman that met a guy, and they got married. Um, well, no. Help me out here. <laughs> I don't know if they got married, they lived together, whatever it was. No. Um, my best friend, who is my best friend, I call her Nellie in the book. I'm yes. not going to yes. tell you what her real name no. is. But um, I met her that first night that I went to the casino. Uh, that woman that won the 10000 right before I won 10000 uh -huh. was to become my best friend, Nellie. Um, I had gone and congratulated her on her win because, like I said, the next night when we went back to the casino, all these same people were sitting there mm -hmm. uh, in these two rows playing. And um, so, you know, she kind of helped me get over uh, the death of my friend, uh, whose name was Kathy. And, um, you know, she, she became my best friend. 
we had uh, mutual friends through the casino, and she met the love of her life. She was a widow, um, and she met the love of her life at the casino. Hmm. <laughs> That's neat. So, um, you know, you never know who you're going to meet there. Really. So you really had, like, a, your own little community in there. It was like a whole uh, community. So it's, it's not just going to In fact, I'd games. rather uh, stay there than be in the outside <laughs> world, you know, like yeah. I am now. But um, it's a different environment. Um, but you get to eat the best of foods. I did. I, I had the best of everything. And I went from nothing uh, to the best of everything, and I'm back to basically nothing again. <laughs> and going full it's circle. okay, though. It's okay. See, I was thinking maybe after the show, you and I can go up and uh, <laughs> maybe I can make some money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, <laughs> I'm open to the. Yeah. No, but my my message in my book is to. Um, look beyond what everybody tells you. I mean, people will tell you what to do all the time. Like, you shouldn't gamble. You shouldn't. Uh, you should shouldn't even talk to people or strangers or whatever they're telling you. You have to do what's in your heart. Uh, what's good for you. Yeah. I found um, being a part of that community of the casino mm. that that became like a second home to me, and the people were so friendly, you know, the casino personnel even. Um, like I said, you know, you have to be true to yourself. Yeah. And if gambling is involved in that, then you have to do that. You know? it's, it's what you got to do. The name of the book is No Limits and How I Beat the Slots by Debbie Tosin. Tosin. Mm -hmm. Kill Day. And, uh, Debbie does other things besides write these books, but it, it's an interesting story. It's it's something that whether you're interested in slots or not, it's a book that has a lot of human interest stories in it. Uh, different people that are in here. It's uh, I, I thought it was very well done. I talk about uh, why people go to the casinos. Uh, my reason was loneliness. I had lost. You know, I was losing my friend. Yeah. Uh, once I met all these people at the casino, it was a diversion of what was going on on, on the outside, you know. So yeah. um, you want to connect, you know. And because I'm on long-term disability for so long, I mean, really a long time, over 22 years now. Wow. So, you know, I don't see anybody. I was at home uh, during the day. Um, at night, you know, my husband would come home from work, but we didn't really do anything. Hmm. Um, this was like a whole, opening up a whole new world to us. Sure. And of course, you know, winning all that money, I could do whatever I want. Yeah. And did he go with you most of the time with the casino? He did. Uh, not all the time, but most of the time. Because he had a job. He had to yeah. work. <laughs> he had to work. He had to work. Now tell us about your other book. I have got three books up here. This the book photography. Book. Yeah, this is um, Farmington River Farmington Reflections. River Reflections. So while I was writing the No Limits book, yeah. um, I was renting a bookstore. It no longer exists now, but um, I was writing at this bookstore. I rented it out. Oh. <laughs> okay. And um, so when I wasn't writing the No Limits book, I would look out the window and I would see these beautiful. Uh, pieces of scenery, and I would actually write poetry. It depended on what I was writing about in this book. Sometimes I was very down, um, sometimes I was happy, and my poetry is reflected in that, you know. Huh. And why don't you give us, give us a couple of shots of the of pictures in there? Okay. Um, what right. I want to tell you here's a oh, picture of the geese. Yeah. The, um, that I would feed every day that I went there. Um, pictures of the Farmington River. Oh, wow. Um, because most of the time we see that on TV is when it's flooded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh. I've been a photographer since the uh, early 70s, so. Wow. You know, I do take a lot of pictures. Yeah, and, gorgeous. Um, here's some fall pictures. Oh, yeah. 
Nice. So anyway, I would be, um, you know, taking some photography and writing some poetry, whatever feelings I was feeling at the time. Mm. And I um, actually uh, made this book first before the No Limits. Oh, is that right? Out. Yes. Yes. Now, you are, besides writing and photographing, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, you also have uh, in charge of the Big E, which uh, made over $31,000 in 17 days of selling books. I did this year. I, I've been doing that for six years now Yeah. Uh, for Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. Yeah. And you don't do a great job. I don't know how you do it. Cause this year was the first work. year where I was actually an author myself selling my book. That's I right. didn't have a book before this That's right. year. And uh, you got special events coming up. Now, this, uh, you're going to be participating in the boutique section of what is that for Ann Nyberg's Network, Connecticut? Uh, she, where is that going to be? It's going to be at Mohegan Sun. Oh, Mohegan Sun. Uh, she is doing a benefit to help the veterans across the state. Um, actually, all the veterans, I guess, whoever huh. comes, they could be from other states. Uh, she, she's doing the Save a Suit Foundation and Music Aid uh, are the two organizations that are helping her with this program. Huh. It's on November 10th. And uh, there's going to be vendors like myself. Uh, I'll be doing some of my crafts from Kilday Crafts. I, I make jewelry, uh, note cards, you know, things like that. Yeah. And um, you do everything. Yeah, I do everything, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, the the important message is, even though I made 3.4 million dollars, I did not change as a person. I stayed the same. That's great. Well, I really appreciate you coming down here, and uh, I know you had some difficulty on the highway because of, <laughs> because of the uh, construction. Uh, every week we try to get somebody different down here, and uh, I like promoting local authors and, mm -hmm. and people of interest. And I know my audience is growing, and hopefully uh, we're going to be uh, seeing them other stations because now, now I've got the discs made up. Uh, a reminder about Kappa, we've got a meeting this week on, uh, not this week, next week on Monday night at the uh, Groton Public Library at 6.30 and I have a special guest speaker coming. Her name is Eileen Albrizio. I love Eileen. <laughs> yeah, you're you're going to be there. She's she, a poet and she's also a member of the group that I belong to, Free Poets Collective. Okay, and she's going to be uh, discussing how to uh, write fiction. and. Uh, I've also had uh, requests for past shows. Now I have CDs available if you email me, and I'll be happy to write you a note and tell you what's available. Uh, upcoming shows, every time I list who's coming up, something happens, mm -hmm. they don't show up. Mm -hmm. So it changes. And I will say that I have an undertaker going to be coming up, as an historian, and several authors, and anybody else I can muster up. Thank you, Debbie, for coming all the way to Groton. Thanks, Debbie Dad. lives in Walkit. Yeah, Walkit. Walkit. My thanks to uh, Comcast TV for hosting our show, and thanks to my sponsors and uh, you, my viewing audience, who I'm hoping is growing, and let me know if you see anything. Be sure to write me in my email address, and I'll see you next week, and don't forget, you should be reading and curl up with a good book.